All right, sports fans. I've recently had some folks ask me some questions about how the interior of a Saigo works. And so here we are. Um, part of it is the, la the bolt hold open. It is not a last round bolt hold open. It's a manually operated bolt hold open. You have to manually push it up. And when you want to let the bolt go forward, you have to pull the bolt back. And because this little plate is spring loaded, it pops down and does what you needed to do. Let's see if I can. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of a byproduct of how Saiga wanted to do things, plus AK mags being what they are. It's not like a PSL where the last round bolt hold open is part of the magazine and the rifle built into the front end here. Now, some of the other fun stuff about Saigas is the trigger group. So, in here you have a regular AK trigger group with the hammer, and then the sear, which is typically where the trigger comes from. But we'll get to that in a minute. And then you have these two extra pins back here. It's because this is one of those California compliant evil have to have it this thing came into the US with a Monte Carlo style stock instead of a pistol grip and a collapsible stock like you see here. Because there are regulations stating that pistol grips are evil and shouldn't be on firearms. Whatever. So they had to move the trigger back in order to accommodate the stock the Monte Carlo stock coming back here. It it looks kind of interesting and it feels a little bit better as far as shouldering it in my opinion. But this trigger is hopelessly and horrendously complicated and its sole purpose is to let the hammer go. It still does the same thing but you can see with all the extra linkages and the up and down and back and forth and it's just it, sanity should be questioned when people come up with designs like this and the safety still works like it does on a traditional AK nothing fancy so you get a worse trigger both in feel and in pull and in repeatability because anytime dirt gets in here it's going to move around all the time and it's one, two, three points instead of one so it's based on just where the dirt can get into and mess with it's 300 percent more likely to get dirt in it if you base it on how many pins are now in here there's four now instead of two it's 200 percent more complex so 250 call it even for want of a non-pistol grip firearm i'll never get it or understand it, it doesn't make any sense to me this is a 12 gauge Saiga, so it does, it is built for 12 gauge, so it's a little bit bigger than most. It's, it's an AK chambered in 12 gauge, there's nothing super fancy about it. And, let me get to scoot this back. You can see how everything else works. So, this is the hammer pin, this is the original trigger pin, so the trigger would come out here. This is a link and link pin to connect the new trigger and trigger pin to the rest of the machine. In order to convert these back, you take the stock off, there's a rivet you take off, there's a rivet you take off, there's a rivet you take off, and spot weld. And you typically have to pry this thing off pretty good. Um, it takes a minute. I've done a few conversions myself. Um, this ends up in a really weird place because of where the trigger comes out. Um, on my Saiga 12, I've actually accidentally locked that open in the middle of a mag. Um, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of this bolt hold open, but it's interesting how they introduced a simple system that does the job and is a reliable system. I mean, it's a spring and it's a plate and the plate connects to the hammer pin. So there's, there's literally, it's, it's a drop in thing. So leave it to the Russians to keep things simple. 
but then leave it to the United States to horribly complicate. Yeah, see that? That's nasty, mushy. Yeah, I almost hear the grit. But yeah, and I've done a fair few conversions. It's just driving these pins out, which is not hard because they are just basically open-ended pins that are flared out to hold in place because the other side is more like a rivet and you get a small enough punch not this this is a scribe but you get a small enough punch in there and just drive it all the way through and you get to take all the guts out and then remove the rivets and replace all this bullshit with the original because there's there's no reason there's no mechanical or logical reason to go to this system where you have to extend everything and provide more linkages and more connections and more points of failure and more likely points of complication. Because every time you introduce a new part to a machine, you're adding to the complexity and you're increasing the chance of a breakdown and you're adding a point of failure to the system. So because of the United States idiotic laws, we've added several points of failure just by moving the trigger back and introducing this legislation for whatever you want to call it it not a fan to say the least it makes my job harder it makes most other people's lives and jobs harder for nothing it does absolutely nothing especially when the tang will fit any of these stocks and all i gotta do is bolt the grip to the stock instead of to the rifle like it's supposed to because this trigger hole if i recall correctly is for the original pistol grip so once you take this stuff off it's literally a matter of getting a regular semi-auto trigger and replacing the crap that's in it and then the trigger guard because you don't need a uh, mag release anymore but then it's a new trigger guard, and it's a new grip. And that's it. And the, the trigger guard is more of a gunsmith thing than anything else. But these pins can be driven out by anyone with a set of punches and a hammer. These pins can be taken out by anyone who knows what the hell they're doing, which is not difficult. And as far as I'm concerned, all the trigger components, you can just throw them away, melt them down, recycle them, whatever. If you happen to live in a place like California that requires crap like this and that Monte Carlo stock, which looks interesting, I think it looks kind of cool, but it's it's not how the AK is meant to be. Look, looks are nice and all, but they don't, when they don't improve or maintain the functionality of a weapon, it, it's pointless. That's That's my take on appearances and looks and all that jazz if you know it can look as nice as it wants as long as it doesn't impair function or functionality or reliability for that matter which this does so there's kind of a long-winded video on the guts of a saiga and this is it'll be the same for all the saiga firearms the the rifles the shotguns all the calibers the only difference is going to be the scale and mostly to do with the bolt there will be some receiver differences between the shotgun and rifle, but most of them are going to be in the bolt and gas system and barrel. Everything else is going to be basically the same, especially with these California compliant versions. So, with that, signing off. Have a good day.